Welcome to the Rose at Home channel. I am Rose, I am at home, and I am so glad that you're here joining me today as I talk about some books that I either loved at book club or that I think would be great for book clubs. I'm in a number of online book groups, not book clubs, but where people talk about books, and we get a lot of questions asking for good book recommendations for book club. And so I thought, why not answer that question here? Because you might have the same question. So these are some recommendations that I have that either went over really well in book clubs that I've been in, or that I think would go over well if given the chance. So my first piece of advice when picking a book club book is don't pick your darlings. Don't pick anything that you are emotionally connected to those characters and it's going to like hurt your feelings or hurt your heart if people say anything bad about them because book club is not necessarily my best friends and I are reading together that's buddy reading totally pick your favorite books because your best friends probably have similar tastes to you so you're gonna know if you go in there and you're like I feel like this book is me here read it your friends are gonna be like, yes, and we love you, so we're going to love your book. Whereas you might walk into book club with a very diverse group and strangers and say, yeah, I really feel like this book, this main character, I feel seen, it's me. And they're gonna say, yeah, I hated that character. <laughs> And if you're emotionally invested, it's not going to go over well. So I don't want you to get yourself hurt. So pick things that are engaging, but not necessarily your favorites. Things where you can like, I'm not saying pick things you don't like, although that also works. Pick things that you like, that you think people will like, but that there's meat there that you can read. So my first suggestion for meaty, likable, but that some people might not like, but you're gonna have stuff to talk about. Frederick Bachman's Anxious People. This is one of those books where people love it or hate it. The general plot line isn't much. There's a group of people that are at an open house for an apartment and a wannabe bank robber kind of breaks in and holds them hostage. And if that sounds exciting, then I did it wrong because it's not really exciting. It's not about plot at all. It is really about these characters and the people in this story and you learn about them as it goes. And some people really don't like this book. Some people don't like these people. Some people just can't stand the characters. But even though it's kind of a walking around talking book, there's not a lot that happens. There's still a lot to discuss. And so even if you hate the people in it, there's a lot still to talk about. So this one I think would be a really good pick. The downsides would be there's not much plot to fall back on if discussion slows down. And it's not super, sh it's not super long, but it's not super short. But other than that, I really think this would be a great one for discussion. And even though I have the hardcover, it's an older book, so getting getting it from the library or getting paperback copies so that everyone can read it without it being too expensive is possible. And that is actually my second tip. Pick as much as you might want to read and talk about the latest thing that's just come out. You might be over the moon for fourth wing. First off, don't pick it if you're as emotionally invested in as I am. At last book club, they were like, who's read it? Because I hate it and want to talk about it. And I hightailed it out as soon as that was over because I had no interest. You're not going to change my mind. I love the book. I love the characters. And I don't want to have to defend them to anybody. So I wouldn't pick that book for this whole like reason. I love it. I want to share it with my friends. I don't want to have to try to defend where people hate about it, but it's also brand new. So people are going to have trouble getting a hold of it and they're going to have to get hardcover since it is new. So pick things that are older. And my thought for picking something that's older is where'd you go Bernadette? This was a big book a number of years ago. So folks who've just gotten back into reading or anyone who might have missed it at the time might not have read it yet or they might have read it so long ago that they'd be willing to reread it for book club. It's also, I 
do love Bernadette and I totally see myself in her. So the thing with Bernadette is she's actually really misunderstood and she'll say and do things that people think are just wacko or just like mean or just just totally out there and then when you see it from her point of view you see like what her real motive was, what she was actually trying to do, what what as from her viewpoint is actually going on and I, I get that. I think we all get that to an extent so I could totally relate to Bernadette in this. So what's the basic plot line of this one, if you did not read it, is there is a woman named Bernadette. She's older. She has become something of a recluse. She had been like an ace architect designer and some stuff happened and I'm not going to ruin it and she and her husband moved to this house they're supposed to fix up and it's just this dilapidated thing that's just falling apart and everyone thinks she's this weird lady on this falling down house and and hijinks ensue and it's not that she's just not what everyone else seems to think that she is their views of her are so skewed and so having all of that to talk about and all of the ways that she's coming across to people and and are these people how much of this is her own making and how much of this is just people wanting to find the bad in people and all of the things that happen i think this would be amazing for a book club discussion i would enjoy that i would reread it for that i would enjoy the heck out of it. There's also a film if you're interested and it does follow fairly closely to the book. They're, they made a few changes but I loved both. I loved the film. I loved the book but I loved it in a way that I can understand she is a flawed character and I would be open to having those discussions and so that's why I think this would be a great choice for a book club book. Something else that also really works well for book clubs is to select a genre or to select a theme. So I almost every single quarter do the mystery book club, however they call it. It's always about mysteries because I enjoy mysteries and they leave a lot of room for discussion. One mystery that I haven't read in book club but I think would work really well is Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Gillian McAllister or Gillian McAllister. So this one has its mystery. There's a supernatural element. The main character in this book, it is Halloween. She's sitting in the window. She watches her teenage son walk up the street. He's coming home. She doesn't sense that anything bad is happening and she sees a strange person coming from the other direction and she watches her son stab this person. She runs out of the house. They're trying to help. It's just horrific and all she can think is, oh my god, my son has killed someone and now his life is is basically ruined what are we gonna do it's just awful well at the end of that night when she finally gets home she goes to bed she wakes up it's the day before and she keeps going backwards in time to try to figure out what's happened why did it happen how do i fix this and save my child and so there's a lot to dig into here with the mystery where did you figure at what point did you figure things out? At what point would you have done different things? And that tends to come up a lot in book club. We, we second guess main characters a lot. And so all sorts of discussions like that could easily come from this book. How realistic is the time travel aspect of it? Because it's the only supernatural thing in the book. They actually talk to scientists in this. Well, she does. She talks to scientists in this book. So they try to really ground it in reality. So how well did they pull that off? Like there's so much in this book that I think would be really well suited to a specifically mystery book club. And this is a hardcover, but that's because I got it right before it came out in paperback. It's out in paperback right now. I don't think it's even her latest release. So it should be easy to find and easy to read. It is also a page turner and page turners also work well for book club. You get a better chance of folks not only starting the book, but getting through it and finishing it in time for your discussions. So this one, the pages practically turned themselves. It moved so fast. So this would totally work for book club. One that we did talk about in book club that is also a mystery and it worked super well is The Plot 
by Jean Hanf Korolitz. Here's hoping I pronounced that correctly. So the plot of the plot is that and I think I actually talked about this book earlier this week or last week. The main character is a writer who is in a slump. He ends up going and teaching a writing retreat for students who are trying to work on their own book. And one of his students tells him a plot that the student says is fail safe, perfect. It's certainly going to be a bestseller. And then months after the retreat ends, he learns that the student has died and died without actually writing this book. So our character sits down, writes the book, and then hijinks ensue. I'm just gonna stay there because it's a mystery. So it's really good and we have it short, so it's not super long, it's super page turny, it's got a lot of meat in there even if you don't have to necessarily, I don't think anybody's in love with this character so much that hearing bad things about him is going to be upsetting. So he is in this morally gray area. And that's another really great thing for a book club book. When you have a character whose behavior is is kind of gray. They don't think necessarily that they're a bad guy or that they're doing anything wrong or sometimes they try to justify themselves a lot but getting to play with how bad is what they did, how how wrong is what they're doing, that works really well for book club and that made this book work really well for book club. We had a great discussion. I want to say we went over time. It was such a good discussion. So I think this one I was there for our book club. It worked really well and I strongly suggest it. Another one with the gray character that is an older book, definitely available in paperback. I don't know where my copy went so I can't show it to you but I hope to have an image right here somewhere and it is Celeste Ng's Little Fires Everywhere. This was such an amazing discussion that we just didn't want to stop. We ran out of time, we went over time, and we still didn't want to stop talking about it because there is so much there to discuss. Everyone in there does things that are questionable, even though they all in their minds have wonderful motives for what they did. They can totally justify, and oftentimes you will buy their justification. You will be like, yeah, no, I totally get why they would do the thing that they did. If you watched the series with Reese Witherspoon in it, they made some changes from the book to that. The show was really good. It just was different, and it was different enough that you could enjoy both on their own and it doesn't really affect how you feel about the other. They're not really super spoilery of each other if that makes sense. But it's an older book. I don't remember it being super long. I wish I had my copy. I don't know what happened to it. This is what happens when you move. It's got so much in there to discuss. No one is super as much as there are great characters in there, they're incredibly well-drawn characters. It is, you can tell, like, as you're reading, you know, yeah, they're doing things I wouldn't do or they're seeing things in a different way than I would. There's enough to talk about. And that made it such a wonderful, wonderful book club book. And I still, I would do another book club with that book if given the chance. I would go get a new copy and do it again because that's how well that went. So I'm a little out of order here. Sorry guys, I'm, I'm a tiny bit scattered, but Back to genre books. Another genre book that I feel like worked really well with mysteries, and we did this in the Mystery Book Club, was Lucy Foley's The Guest List. This is great because, again, all of the characters are pretty much skirting a gray area. Oftentimes they have a past or they have something that they're hiding, which you find out. It also jumps around for perspective. So you get to see the story through the eyes of multiple characters. It's not just one or two. You get to watch it through all of them and you get to also hear what the other ones think of them when they're when you're in their head. So you get the folks from the outside view of the folks and the inside view of them. And for this book, it works so well. So the basic plot line, if you are unfamiliar with the guest list, there is a wedding that is taking place on a secluded island. 
I want to say up Scotland, England sort of way, and there is this raging storm. So they're able to bring the wedding guests to the facility of this little island, and then because of weather, nobody can leave and nobody can come in. So it's one of those kind of locked room mysteries, but it's like locked island because a dead body is found. And at the beginning of the story, you don't know if the dead, who the de who is dead and who did it. So you get the whole story, it backs up to everybody arriving and everybody planning everything. And so you get to see the bride's perspective, the groom perspective, the best man, the bride's little sister, the wedding planner, all of these different people who are on this island and you get to see them through each other's eyes and then from inside themselves. And so it gives you so much to discuss, so much to work with. It was a lot of fun. This was one of the most fun books that we discussed in book club over the years and I strongly recommend and again it's an older book now it's easy to get copies and it's totally out in paperback it's not super long absolutely a page turner all it ticks all the boxes for a really great book club pick and I think any book club would enjoy reading this another one that we've read in the mystery book club that I really enjoyed I will say not everyone there enjoyed it and it is Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia. I love everything Silvia Moreno Garcia and I really loved this character. So this is about a kind of sad young woman. She goes to work, she goes home, she's got a little apartment in this building and she wants to be friends with the other tenants but they just kind of use her to like feed their cats and water their plants when they're not home and all of that. No one's really friends with her. They're friendly towards her. She has this amazing kind of imaginative life and imaginative world that revolves around these romance magazines. So she doesn't even read romance novels. She reads sections of romance magazines and so they're published I guess weekly and you get the next section of the story in the next one so she's constantly waiting for the next story and she's imagining all the people around her as if they were the characters in this romance magazine well in her apartment building one of the women who a girl who had asked her to feed the cat doesn't come back and so she's like what do I do and I'm not going to spoil it. Hijinks absolutely ensue. All of this stuff happens. And some of the gravity of it might be in her head because she's got such an overactive imagination. And some of it might be real. You, you spend almost the whole book not quite knowing exactly what's going on. And, but in a fun way, not in a confusing way. So the way she behaves, the way the other characters behave, the choices that she makes, it made for a really great discussion. I really enjoyed discussing this and, and I loved the book, but the discussion actually helped me enjoy it even more because folks noticed things that maybe I didn't. And so that's always helpful. So one book that I, again, don't have a copy of, I actually read it on my Kindle. I, I own a Kindle even with all these books. I I'm not much of a Kindle reader. I like having paper books too much, but I do have a Kindle. And the author had put this book out for free a couple of years ago. So I had just downloaded it and then they picked it for book club. And I was like, okay, I own it. I have a copy on my Kindle. I'll go ahead and read it. And it was one of the best and most lively book club discussions, even though about half the book club hated it and half the book club absolutely loved it and said it was their favorite book ever. It was this, it's this weird dichotomy this book and this author have this weird dichotomy. By now you probably figured it out. I'm talking about Colleen Hoover and it was Verity. If you are unfamiliar, the story of Verity is kind of a gothic light 
sort of novel. A young writer who's down on her luck gets asked to come to this giant mansion and finish a romance novel that is like down in a series. So there's a whole series of these romance novels. So the novelist has had some sort of accident. She is now in a coma, but this book needs to be finished. So they bring in this young writer to finish the book. And she's in this mansion. There's this mysterious guy. There's all this weird, is she really in a coma? Is she not? What's going on? Anyway, hijinks ensue. And so that's as far as I'm going to go with Verity because I don't want to spoil anything. But it's one of those weird books where people get really invested even if they don't like it and people want to discuss it even if they didn't necessarily care for it. It is a super easy read. It reads incredibly quickly. You're not stumbling over anything. It's just steam train of plot line as you go. So it makes it a great one for book club. And we had huge numbers. We had more people I think than we'd ever had for any other book show up for that one. It was just one of the best discussions, even though it wasn't what I would call one of the best books that we had ever read at book club but it ticked all the boxes. It was older. It wasn't too long. It was a super fast read. It had a lot of moral gray in there, so it gave you a lot to discuss, and it was genre for mystery. So it totally worked perfectly, and we did enjoy the discussion. I'm not going to say it's my favorite book. I'm not going to say it's my least favorite book. I enjoyed reading it, and I really enjoyed talking about it. It's not something I'm going to reread. I'm not looking to go buy a copy, but I'm really glad we had that, and if you're maybe starting a book club or trying to think of what's something that people will actually read and want to talk about, that book will do it. So the next thing that I want to talk about, I have not read in book club. It is newer, so it doesn't follow all of the things that I'm suggesting, but I think it would make for interesting discussion, and that is R.F. Kuang's Yellow Face. I wouldn't even say that the main character here is morally gray. They're not. The thing here is that the main character thinks they're morally gray, but they're actually kind of a bad person. So what happens is there is a young writer who is out with someone who is maybe an acquaintance, maybe a best friend. It depends on which chapter you're reading and what she's thinking about at the time. But the friend dies. And because they're in the friend's house, she has already seen that the friend has finished a manuscript of a book. And so she slips the book into her purse, she sends it to her publisher, and she claims it as her own. Now the publisher, because the book focuses on a period in Chinese history, and our main character is not Chinese, she starts trying to make herself seem more ethnic. She's not trying to just flat out seem like she's Asian, but she changes her name so that her last name now is Song, which is a more common last name for some Asian countries. She takes photos of herself where her skin looks a little different and they play with, they don't, like flat out try to make her look Asian, but they tr do try to make her look ethnically ambiguous. And so all of that kind of stuff is going on and social media starts trying to investigate things and then hijinks ensue. <laughs> Like, that keeps happening. Hijinks ensuing is great for book club because it gives you a lot to talk about. So this is new. It's not in uh, paperback yet, but it will be probably soon because it was new at the end of last school year. So I want to say it came out April, May-ish. It's not super long and it totally is a page turner. Even though you want to jump in the book and totally like shake the main character, there's so much of her behavior that I think would make interesting discussion. So this is one I think would work, but I haven't been in a book club with this yet. Okay, so I really hope that that was helpful. And if that was helpful, I'm gonna ask you to please hit that subscribe button because I try to be helpful twice a week. And I would absolutely love to have you join me again. So if you hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell so you find out every time I post a new video and you get to come and join me again, I would love that. That would make me very happy. So in the meantime, 
I do hope that you have an absolutely amazing week and I absolutely hope that you get to read some really amazing books, maybe for your book club. Okay, bye everybody.